my phone case by the way um, it's actually very clean and the reason it looks dirty is because I've put hand sanitizer gel on it so many times that it's kind of the plastic is disintegrating but it's actually because I've sterilized it so many times now this um, I think this is my favorite room again it's just a tour when a tour of the living room when all the lights are on and when I get another sunny day, which is probably in about a month's time because the forecast is absolutely dreadful, um, I will take a shorter video, not talking about everything. And you'll see how lovely it is, especially in the late afternoon. I think this is actually a north facing building, so we would get absolutely zero sun were it not for this monstrosity opposite you see that kind of skyscraper I don't okay let's see I'll show you how tall it is it is um, no you can't see because of the balcony above it's a it's like three times the size of this skyscraper but basically were it not for this monstrosity we wouldn't get any afternoon Sun at all but we do it bounces straight off their windows and into our flat so anyway, um, yeah, I'll do another short video then. So there are so many things to talk about in this room because I spent so much time um, thinking about every detail and I'm not sure if it really all comes together, but I love it and my partner doesn't really mind what things look like, which is, is lucky, so he just lets me do what I want. So let's start with, I'll try and keep this brief. The mirror is a really cheap mirror from Tesco, Florence and Fred. This wall light is a very, very cheap wall light. I think it was £30 from somewhere online. I quite like it. And there were horrific wall lights here and on the other wall. Which you can see in the kind of preparatory videos which we got a handyman to take out and substitute these and the difference is amazing so um, changing light fittings is makes such a difference to a room if you can't make many big changes for instance you know you can't change the height of the ceiling you can't expose any lovely brickwork you can't expose any floorboards wallpaper and change the light fittings and paint as well. That makes a massive difference. The wallpaper is, um, I don't, I can't remember the name of it, but it's by Barasta Peter. It 
I actually had five faulty rolls of wallpaper and what happened was there was a tiny little bit missing of the actual print so that when I came to join the seams no matter how I did it they wouldn't meet because actually a bit of the printed pattern was missing they seem to have cut the rolls too soon if you see what I mean so after a bit of faff faffing around um, I got a refund for all of the wallpaper so that's great Now, I'm just going to show you the kitchen quickly. It's, it's as it was when we moved in. And I haven't done anything to make it look nice. I'm just showing you in case you wonder about that part of the room. I'm really grateful for the fact, you know, that it's a workable kitchen. And in time, hopefully, I'll get to that. Now, um, I decided to wallpaper just one wall in this room because I felt otherwise it was a little bit sterile. It's just all white. And... and I also wanted to inject a bit of organic life into the room because it was so man-made and it was so, um, I don't know, it was just so miserable and gray and modern and so, I really am delighted with the way the wallpaper has brought the room to life. There we go. So this whole wall, actually two walls, I guess, I wallpapered. And on the bottom, I put wood panelling. Which I haven't done very well, but I did as best as I could with a handsaw. As you can see, it's not a good job at all these pieces of MDF and they're moulded pieces of MDF which come, they're actually bloody brilliant, they come in like a sheet um, sort of about as wide as that to that so I only needed about four sheets to do, the sheets don't go behind the bookcases so they stop about just there and I did this around here because I wanted a kind of Scandinavian, very fresh, white and green, leafy, vibrant kind of folk style um, kitchen dining area. And I painted them white obviously because they were brown being MDF. And I filled in bits with polyfiller. Um, but the jigsaw we had was so cheap that it cut in diagonal lines all the time. So my partner, brilliantly actually, worked out a solution which was to, I think, so for every central line we wanted to cut, we marked on the MDF a pencil line of 4.8 centimetres one side and 3.2 centimetres the other side. And that was the kind of offset and if we put the jigsaw in the middle of those measurements, that took care of the discrepancy of the diagonal slant. And so cutting even these basic MDF pieces was a job and a half. And especially this bit here, <laughs> look how bad that is around the power points. Really bad. But, you know, I, I got to the point where I couldn't handle the convolutions anymore. <laughs> And nobody really looks down there anyway. So, um, yeah, so I got my panelling. And I think it works really well with my Barasta Peter wallpaper. Again, some fake flowers, fake plant, this time hiding, <laughs> hiding a massive gap in the MDF, which I tried to camouflage with uh, polyfiller, but there's only so much you can do with polyfiller. Um, a lovely little IKEA plant stand. I'm sure you've seen it on their website if you're familiar with IKEA and so Scandinavian. Some nice terracotta flower pots, but modern that I distressed to make them look old and whitened. What is the white onto flower pots? I, I don't really know why they go white, but um yep. Um so as much greenery as I could. Um as with lots of other rooms in the house, I wanted to put as many plants into the room as I could because 
it just adds a bit of vibrancy, a bit of life, a bit of kind of health to the room. And so, yeah, um, some canvases. This, this is, um, I think it's Cedric Morris, this top one. Really, really beautiful oil paintings, at least I think so. Look at that, look at the colours in that. And I feel it goes well with the wallpaper. I had the similar problem with this wallpaper as the other wallpapers in that it, because it's kind of a busy pattern, although not quite so dramatic as the hall wallpaper and the bedroom wallpaper, it was actually pretty difficult knowing what to put with it. And what turned out to look best with it were dark frames or pretty intense colours. So I got some canvases from Amazon, I think. Um, this is just an old photo of me, my friend and my old English teacher, but the yellow chunky frame kind of works. And then a kind of food themed uh, picture, um, a klimt, which I have the same klimt in the main bedroom. And then this plate from eBay, this ties in beautifully with my folk theme. An anthropology plate, which really doesn't go at all, but um, it was too nice just to stick in a cupboard. Another anthropology plate, which goes a bit better. Um, this flower dough, salt, um, salt dough plaque by my mum. She made it for my partner and I as a kind of housewarming present. It's really really beautiful. I used to make these packs with my mum when I was a lot younger. And then this, I think, really kind of stunning, I think it's Russian or maybe Hungarian. Folk um, style plate. It's actually quite light. I think it's like paper mache. Uh, again, an eBay find. This is a cheap Ikea picture look too closely and you'll see <laughs> this is a very very beautiful painting by a Scottish artist can't really see it for, because of the reflections but it I feel is absolutely stunning it's just a poster from Tate Modern and I actually paid to have it framed but was really disappointed because the frame wasn't wood. I thought I was buying a wood frame and it cost enough, but it's actually resin. And that sounds okay, but it turns out that it's just just basically plastic. And it looks plastic. And it looked even worse before I put acetone on it. But after two coats of acetone, it looks slightly less shiny and plasticky. In any case, from a distance, which I think should be the motto of my all my decorations, from a distance, it looks okay, even if the mount is slightly too big, but it's hard to work these things out when you're doing everything online and you can't take your picture to a picture framer and try things out. The, the picture above is, I think, an absolutely exquisite painting. This is a red bubble print. And it's one of their better ones. Lots of their prints are really bad quality, but this one, as you can see, is pretty good. I really love this style of art, gorgeous. And I got um, this frame from the same place I got this frame from, and I thought it was gonna be gold because on the website, the photo showed a gold frame. So I would not recommend However, it does have slightly gold bits, which I was trying to get to go with the gold in the picture. Then above, we've got another anthropology plate, which doesn't really go. And we've got a um, Nukuku, N-K-U-K-U, or something, frame, metal frame, with some pictures of my, um, my grandparents and an old house that my family had once before they became uh, penurious. <laughs> 
And then this one, this really delightful grandfather clock, which again is an eBay find. And I thought the gold of the face would go with the gold in this picture and kind of the burnished feeling in the... Now, some, some Ikea, fray, um, Ikea shelves which have stayed up, thank goodness, so there's a weight of china on them. Um, I wanted all the woodwork to be white, as you'll see there's a white, there were white chairs, but the table is um, natural colour wood. And I have a load of china on these shelves. Um, I guess mainly dark black or blue, red and kind of a leafy green with also some blue. But to be honest, I wasn't trying to color coordinate anything. Um, I was just using what I had. And I could go through all these shelves. Maybe I'll do a separate video about that because there are some interesting finds on here. These are genuinely vintage Swedish tins which I found in a charity shop for about two pounds in Crystal Palace, which absolutely made my day. There's some nice modern reproduction tins which look very vintage. Um, yeah, anyway, I can't go into everything in this video, so I'll leave that for another day. Um, now we come to the table, which is an IKEA table with a very interesting and rather large gap in the middle, which I didn't realise until I bought it. But anyone who has bought this model of table, The gap is not evident at all in the photos on Ikea's website. Now, these chairs are also by Ikea, and I really, really love them. They've got that kind of countryfied, Scandi vibe, that, or at least folk style vibe that I really like. Um, this blue runner is, a bar, is from the Ikea kind of reject or bargain shop you know just before the tills there's a kind of little um place where they put things that are discounted i think it was one pound and this is the gorgeous gock and jobs table runner genuinely vintage 60s table runner gock and jobs from sweden from a lovely lady who runs a vintage swede etsy shop It is just, it just sort of summed up everything I was trying to achieve in, in the aesthetic in this bit of the room. Um, and I, I just am delighted with it and I never use it to be honest because I'm just terrified of getting anything on it. Um, it's also quite small but I find that I can kind of um, add a bit of length by putting it on this blue table runner. Now, if you've watched the master bedroom video, you'll know about these green antique, um, I think they're bud vases, and they just go really well in the dining room as well, so I brought them in here with the rhubarb coloured candles. And then we've got um, a charity shop vase with some, yes, you guessed it, more fake flowers. And this oil decanter and salt cellar are from Zara and I feel they really perfectly reflect the kind of folk style um, countryfied actually they felt they, they looked a little bit Greek in the photos on Zara they don't work terribly well but they're really pretty <laughs> and so they oh and that's an Ikea pendant lamp What we did was, there was a horrible wall light on the wall, approximately where my finger is, and we got the electrician to take the wall light off. It was a circular glass thing, absolutely horrific. 
we took it off and we strung the bit of wire along the ceiling and um, along the corner of the wall, across the ceiling and down here. I even like the flex on this Ikea light. I don't, I, I don't know, I'm just a big fan of Ikea. I like a lot of their stuff. So this is my, what shall I call it? Um, oh, and the rug is Ikea as well. Really lovely, good quality rug. And um, uh, the, the beauty of having a multicolored thing is that you really can put everything with it. So there is our dining area. And when the kitchen is done, I envisage it because there's no window or no light. I'm gonna do it probably white to tie in with the paneling and the white woodwork and possibly blue and gold notes but I'm not really sure yet and what I really think would help with the light is to put a mirror over the sink um, and I, what I would really also love to do is to make some built-in cupboards here so extend this wall along here and then have floor to ceiling cupboards Um, that might never happen. In any case, I'm just really delighted with this dining room part of the room. Yeah, really, really chuffed. And actually, although I was really gutted that the sun wasn't coming back for a month, um, I'm very happy now because in the artificial light it looks really lovely. So now I'll show you this bit. This is my cat doorstop, which was in my room that I made in Wales but um, he or she has now come to London. Some more Ikea rugs, which I think are really, really beautiful and go with my kind of folk style Scandi vibe. This is another Ikea rug from, uh, from, um, from Gumtree, Gumtree, yes. It was actually very, very challenging getting this in a taxi. You wouldn't believe how heavy it was. Or maybe you would if you have any experience with wood, with, if you have any experience with woolen rugs, if a rug is wool, it will weigh a ton. But the upside is, it looks really blinking lovely. Oh yeah, and because there's, there are actually tiles all the way across this room, and because um, although we own this flat, it's really weird. We're like tenants because there are so many stipulations as to what we can't, can and can't do. And one of the stipulations is we have to have carpeted floor, floors. Well, you know, we didn't have the money to take up all the tiles and put down carpets. So um, I just bought lots of rugs. And these are IKEA rug stays. They're kind of sticky bits of felt. And they're very, very effective, actually. So, okay, so onto my cabinet. This is an Ikea cabinet, it's so famous, it's one of the most popular pieces. And pieces. And I, I feel justifiably so because it, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, The little stool is Ikea as well. I just love the kind of, the folk style of that. This is an old, um, well, oldish tray with a Klimt print on it. This is a trolley from Ikea. Um, and thank goodness it fits in this space because um, <laughs> I was set with the task of buying furniture for this place because we didn't have any when, when we moved in. But I bought so much furniture, it's a wonder it does fit in. You'll see when I show you the rest of the room. But, um, thank goodness, this these doors close. Um, so, and also it's really hand so I can fit this trolley here, because it doesn't fit anywhere else. Also, it's really handy having enough piece of furniture on wheels, which I would, it's a really good tip for anyone. Um, making a home and trying to separate spaces.
So anyway, I've just got lots of crockery on here. I may as well show you this now. I've got all my tablecloths and napkins there. Some cheap IKEA bowls, some cheap IKEA placemats, some lots of cheap placemats from the Chelsea Garden Centre, some cheap Tesco China, some various bowls and wooden spoons, some cheap IKEA jugs, a really lovely um, metal jug, enamel, sorry, enamel. Um, yeah, so that's the bottom tray, and then on the top tray, I've got an Oliver Bonas. Ah, <laughs> sorry. Um, we have a joke about Oliver Bonas, and we say his name is, well, the company name, not as Bonas, but Bonas. Um, yeah, excuse that. So, this is just a pink dish uh, plate thing by Oliver Bonas, and a white IKEA metal tray. And then a Tesco, Florence and Fred square wooden tray. Then some Ikea plates and an Ikea jug, gravy jug. And then, just as a shrine to my genius, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I put some of my favourite editions of um, my first novel on and Ikea, they've got these really cool little book stands which I think are just for cookery books but I've used them on my bookcases and here and I just really like all the different covers and I thought, you know what um, writers work so hard on a book why not celebrate it? especially if if it's, if it's just not really characteristic of you to celebrate what you've accomplished, why the heck not? So I put some of my favourite covers here. This is an Ikea um, candle stand and this is a Kandinsky canvas which is actually fading in the sunlight and this is a really cheap Ikea picture of feathers. Which...